No well-bred lady should eagerly receive the attentions of a gentleman, even if she admires him, and his reputation must be taken into account before you ever entertain letting him escort you anywhere. Pearl Chambers, The Gentlewoman's Guide to Love and Courtship Chapter 1 Mountains of donated boxes teetered against the west wall when Heather Demerit entered the smitten library. The building had been renovated a few months earlier and still held a trace of that new smell on the brown carpet. The oak bookshelves that housed the library's growing collection and the matching tables still shone with newness. Several businesses had donated the bank of computers lining one wall. Heather spoke to several friends, then turned to eye the job she'd come to do. She was prepared to work, but the sheer number of books surprised her. Her friend and fellow book club member, Abby Gray, motioned to her. Abby was the smitten librarian, though she was much too pretty to fit the stereotype, even with her blonde hair perpetually up in a bun. Heather threaded through the throng to reach Abby's side. This is going to take a while. Abby's cheeks were flushed. Isn't it exciting? So many people want to help Molly. Their good friend Molly Moore had recently lost her husband in a tragic fire. He was the only volunteer fireman to die in recent memory, and Smitten was still reeling, as was Molly. Abby waved vaguely. You can start there. Heather opened the nearest box and began to lift out the books to put in sale piles ranging from one dollar to five. Five dollars was too much to pay for some of these books, but it was for a good cause, and everyone would feel great about helping. An hour later, her throat was scratchy, and her nose was stuffy from all the dust. But she'd made progress. Need some help? Eliana Burton asked. Leah, as her friends called her, was the kindergarten teacher at the elementary school in town. She usually had a crayon stuck behind one ear and a slash or two of color on her arms or hands from Crayola markers. But today she looked fresh and carefree in a silky blue top over jeans that hugged her slim hips. I'll take you up on it, Heather said. We might finish in time for coffee at Mountain Perks. There was only one towering stack left. She lifted down the top box and opened it. A cloud of dust wafted out, and she wrinkled her nose. Leah waved her hand in front of her face. Some of these are old. They might be worth some money. Heather took out the top book, a thick tome bound in green leather. The cover was in surprisingly good condition. She eyed the title, then burst out laughing. <laughs> Look at this. Have you heard of it? The Gentlewoman's Guide to Love and Courtship. She laughed again as she opened the book. <laughs> Look at this opening, Leah. It claims the reader who understands these patterns and uses them will find true love. Pearl Chambers. Yeah, she was a local author. Pretty famous back in her day. Wasn't she related to Molly's husband in some way? His maternal great-grandmother or something? Leah peered over her shoulder at the place where Heather's finger pointed. I could use a little luck like that. How about you? Heather's smile faded. I don't think so. Romance is overrated. And look at this advice. She read it aloud. A young lady should not allow a man to address her by her first name. A bit outdated, wouldn't you say? Maybe so. Leah's eyes went soft. Honey, don't swear off all men just because you ran into a rat. The right fellow is out there. She tucked the book under her arm. In fact, I'm going to buy it for you. You like mysteries. This one is about deciphering behavior. It's right up your alley. In spite of Heather's protests, Leah marched to the library desk and plunked down ten dollars for the book. Too bad it would take more than a book to turn Heather's love life around. Since her work was done, she carried the book to one of the tables and began to leaf through it. A yellow envelope fell out. The return address showed it was from a Beatrice Chambers, and there was a paper inside. Curious, Heather pulled it out. Her brow furrowed when she began to read. 